You're on. Good morning. Welcome to the live stream service at South Park Christian Center in National City. King David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And my heart echoes that this morning. I'm always glad when it's Sunday. I love coming to the house of the Lord, don't you? Yes. It's a joy to see so many of you here this morning. And we pray that the rain didn't scare the rest of them away and that they will come too. But wherever you are this morning, would you open your heart to receive everything the Lord has for you as we worship together and as we look into his word. I know the Lord has something special to say to each one of us today. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the privilege we have of gathering each week in your name. It is such a joy to come to your house, Lord, and we find your presence here so real, so able to meet every one of our needs, and so we come, needy people, to an amazing God. We thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayer this morning. Visit every home, Lord, that is receiving this service. I just pray that you will minister to every need. Bless every member of that family, and may they know it was good to have come into your presence. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Steve is going to lead us in worship this morning, and Steve, you and the team, lead us to the throne of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You guys are all part of my team. Amen. So team, let's stand and let's worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on. How many know that it's a great day, it's a beautiful day that the Lord has made? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
is our mighty God. He is the one we call upon. Hallelujah. And we need to go. I know my wife's been reading the book of Exodus. And how many know that we're living out the book of Exodus today? Hallelujah. How many know that Pharaoh is going to fall? Hallelujah. And we are going to the promised land. Amen. Jesus is leading us. Hallelujah. He is our great I am. Amen.
moves in our lives, how it's just, things just change, amen? Things that just seem like they're just out of whack or, how would you say, just like on a stray. And, Spirit of heaviness is on us. We need to put on the garment of praise. Amen? Amen. Because the spirit of heaviness is over our nation right now. And with us, the church, we need to praise Him. We need to worship Him. Amen? Because Satan is trying to just put us out. And he's just trying to just get us down. But we just need to remember, church, that this isn't the end of the story. Amen? This is just the because how many know God has got great things planned? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. God is on the move. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. This is how I fight my battle. Oh, here we go. It never looked like mine. 
with you. He is your God. If you will trust him, he is there and he loves you so much. Oh, what a wonderful message to be surrounded by God. When we are, that is how we fight our battles. Amen? We fight in the power and the strength of the Lord. Well, it's a joy to see each of you that have come this morning. We just know that you're going to receive from the Lord. And in a few moments, we're going to gather at the Lord's table and enjoy communion together as David leads us. And so, as you prepare your family, would you gather the elements and uh, bring them together and enjoy this time in the presence of the Lord? It's a joy to come to the Lord's table and share in communion with him and with each other. And that's what he wants to do today, is make himself so real to you. As you're sitting in your home, you are not alone. You are surrounded by him, and that is how you fight your battles, amen? We just sang about it, let's believe it. Let's go with David now to the Lord's table and partake of communion together. As I was singing that song, the thing that came to my mind is, how many times did the children of Israel, how many times were they surrounded by enemies that outnumbered them, and yet God came to their rescue? How many times were there more leaders or more enemies against them than there were of them, and what did God tell them to do? Put the worshipers out in front. In this crazy world we live in, more than ever we, before, we, God's people, need to be praising and worshiping yes. Him yes. for every yes. good and perfect gift that comes from Him. Amen. Amen. We should count our blessings daily because they are not promised for tomorrow. If you have your communion elements, uh, prepare them and let's let's do this. Father, we give you praise and honor, Lord, for this another day. We thank you for your grace and mercy, which renew for us this morning, Lord. And Father, as we stand in your presence right now, Lord God, I thank you for your promise when two or three gathered in your name, there you in the midst. We welcome you to have your way this morning, Lord God. Move not only here in this sanctuary, Lord God, but in every home. In every gathering, Lord God, where people are tuning in, whether they're tuning in live or whether they're tuning in later, Lord God, move as only you can to open doors that need to be open and slam shut doors that need to be slammed shut. We thank you for your protection, your provision, your guidance, and your favor that are ours because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Father, we recognize that we have a covenant with you, a covenant that was ratified by the shed blood of Jesus at Calvary. And because of the fact that Jesus' body was broken for us, that his blood was shed in our behalf, we acknowledge that he bore sin, sickness, disease, sorrow, grief, fear, torment, unforgiveness, strife, and lack for us. Through his substitutionary sacrifice, we have complete redemption, total deliverance from the works of Satan. As new creations in Christ Jesus, we realize our freedom has been bought and paid for. We are forgiven, and we give thanks for it all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we examine our own hearts and judge ourselves according to the authority of your word in areas where we've missed the mark. Strife, unforgiveness, jealousy, envy, hatred, covetousness, fear, worry, unbelief, and any other area. We take Jesus as our advocate and high priest. We ask forgiveness according to the word of God in 1 John 1, 9, where your word says that you are faithful and just to forgive us when we confess our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, we do not eat of the bread nor drink of the cup unworthily, but we rightly discern the Lord's body. Father, we receive communion now as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you that we are free from the works of Satan, spirit, soul, and body. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Partake of the bread, please. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you shall the Lord's death till he come. Partake of the cup, please. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all you provided for us in Christ Jesus. We confess this day that we are blessed of the Lord. This covenant we enter into with the new birth is a covenant filled with the exceeding great and precious promises of God. And we are partakers of those promises now. 
We are healed. We are redeemed. We are delivered from the authority of darkness. We are transplanted into the kingdom of God's dear son. We are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. We come behind in no good thing, and all that we set our hands to prospers. And we praise you, Father, for the newness of life that we now enjoy. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 sundown. She had waited until this time because she hoped she would escape notice. But as she neared the well, she saw a man there that she did not recognize. <coughs> he was a Jew, she noted. So she began to draw water from the well. And suddenly he said, give me a drink. And she said, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Don't you know that the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? He then talked to her about living water that only he could provide. And she said to him, where would you get that? You don't have anything to draw from. The stranger, sensing a breakthrough, told her to go and call her husband and return. Her reply was, I have no husband. The stranger, possessing supernatural wisdom, spoke to her with liberating truth. You were right, he said, you've had five husbands, and the one you're with now is not your husband. The stranger perceived her heart and knew that he would ultimately bring her to freedom. The layers of her hard life were coming off layer by layer. The stranger's words were somehow bringing her hope. She made one final reply to him. I know the Messiah is coming, and when he comes, he will tell us all things. And then he looked her right in her eyes and said, I who speak to you am he. She left her water pot, ran to her home, and began the mission to her people, the Samaritans. Come and meet a man who told me everything I ever did, she said. Many believed the words of her testimony, while others came to hear the life-changing words of the stranger himself. The word of knowledge that Jesus spoke that day concerning her past and present marital condition <laughs> played a part in her conversion. She truly thought, here's a man who knows the beginning of my life to the present. It cut through all of her arguments and doubts, and she was ready to receive everything he had for her. God wants to use you and me in that way as well, not for ourselves, but to bless others and bring them to a knowledge of truth so that they too can be set free. He wants to use us to speak into the lives of those who need to know him and help them know that he cares about every one of them. There is no one exempt from his love. Words of knowledge are given to produce fruit in the life of another, like at the woman at the well. What is a word of knowledge? Well, it's a supernatural revelation of knowledge that comes only from God. It's not through natural means. Often it's just a bit of information that God drops into a heart for a person or a situation. It's a truth that the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to produce a desired result. Sometimes it's given to protect the flock or to serve as a warning for others. And there are times that knowledge is dropped into hearts and minds from the Spirit, which is for us personally. I've talked to several this morning that have had that experience today, 
God spoke to them personally and gave them a word to know what to do. Sometimes a word of knowledge can be so simple that it's life-changing. Like the other gifts, it is a supernatural impartation, a revelation of facts about someone or something. It comes as the Spirit wishes to reveal and bless. Just like Jesus revealed the past of this woman at the well, it was meant to bring her freedom from the bondage of sin. This gift must be exercised with great caution and maturity. Humility must always be present in the operation of this gift as it is with all the others. When we, frail human beings, are entrusted with the perfect gift, caution should always be exercised. This is not to say that we should not boldly step into what God is speaking to us, but we need to ask ourselves, did I hear correctly and did I deliver it well? Here are some guidelines that will help as God blesses you with that gift. Number one, listen always to the still, small voice. Do you know that voice? Has it spoken to your heart? You remember when Elijah heard it in 1 Kings chapter 19, the Bible says he wrapped his face in his mantle and stepped outside of the entrance of the cave where he had been hiding and God gave him words of knowledge for the days ahead. That still small voice had spoken to him. He knew it and recognized and knew it was the voice of God. That voice comes different ways to different people. Some, it's a strong impression. You know that is what you should do. For others, it's an unusual emotion of love that floods your heart for someone that you're ministering to. Because God wants you to feel his love so that you can impart that love to them. Number two, always be in the position of inquiring of the Lord. Lord, is this your timing? Is this what you want me to do and say? Always be willing to stop and listen for that still, small voice. And don't be afraid of silence and waiting. God sometimes speaks in the silence, doesn't he, in the quietness of our heart. It may come as a single word or an impression that will have great meaning to the one that you are ministering to. Don't worry. Share what God gives you. God won't do our part, and we can't do his, so both are needed. Number three, be willing to step out in faith. Be willing to take the time needed for the one that you're ministering to. When you're first beginning, you will rarely get a complete Holy Spirit download all at once. He usually gives it in bits and pieces. Remember, our ability to discern between the spirit and the flesh will continue to be refined as we use this gift and work in the knowledge that he gives us. Number four, stay biblical and humble. No word of knowledge will ever contradict God's word. Everyone who ministers in this gift must be a student of the word, always learning, ever learning to hear what God has to say. And not all words of knowledge should be spoken. Some may just be for you to know so that you will better know how to pray for the one you're ministering to. Ask God for wisdom. Number five, there's no need to be dramatic. Although the word may have aroused your emotion, you don't need to come like an Old Testament prophet and say, thus saith the Lord. It's just okay to say, I sense the Lord is saying to me, and this is what I would like to share with you. It can be that simple. Amen. Quiet and natural is probably the best way. God will give wisdom for each situation as we trust him. Number six, no fear allowed. One of the reasons believers hesitate to use this gift is they are afraid they will mess up. But trust the Lord. He will give you further insight as you minister what he gives to you. Mary was spoken to by the Lord this morning. She hadn't planned to give that message, I am sure. But she was sensitive to the voice of wisdom that God gave her and knowledge for that moment. And we got the benefit. Didn't you feel blessed and edified when she shared this morning? course. So one of the reasons believers fail to is we might mess up. And you know, we are frail. And if we mess up, just say, I'm sorry, I messed up. 
Trust the Lord. He will give you further insight as you minister. The last one, reading their mail is not to be feared. Not everybody looks forward to having their mail read, if you know what I mean. They view it primarily as a rebuke from God, but if God gave you that word, it's going to be okay, because he's going to minister to their hearts just in the way that it's needed. At that point, it's good to remember 1 Corinthians 12, 7, which reminds us that the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the profit of all. The message that we heard this morning as the worship team ministered was to benefit the whole church. So we listen and we receive each according to our need. All the gifts are given to benefit and bless the body of Christ. Yeah. And that should not be feared. All of us want to be used in that role. Next, I want to talk to you about the discerning of spirits. There are three types of spirit beings. First of all, there's the human spirit. And Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I love to read that verse. It's such a beautiful prayer. And that's my prayer for all of us, that we will be blameless before the coming of the Lord. You and I are all spirit beings, so we don't talk about that very often. We have a body, we have a soul, and we are a spirit and God has created it that way. Triune, even as he and his son and the Holy Spirit are triune also, three in one. And secondly, there are angelic spirits. And there are two categories. There are demonic ones and angelic ones. And the third is the Spirit of God, which we also call the Holy Spirit. Each of these spirits transcends the physical. Each one is knowable by humans, especially when the human spirit is regenerated by the Holy Spirit. Don't be surprised if you recognize the difference between them, because you should, as the Holy Spirit reigns in your life. The gift of discerning the sp of spirits involves a supernatural perception that allows an individual to perceive the type of spirit they are dealing with behind the person because of his actions and his words. And then we're asking God, Lord, is this of you or is it from another source? As with most of these gifts, the one is often interconnected with other gifts. A classic example of this gift was when Paul in Philippi in Acts 16 was ministering, he and Silas encountered a girl that was possessed with a spirit of divination we talked about that last Wednesday night in our Bible study. She followed them for several days, announcing, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. You might have thought and listened to those words. Those words were true. Maybe they should have been honored. But she was very annoying. She was following them around, and day after day was making this loud proclamation. So Paul became very annoyed and turned around, Notice, he spoke to the spirit, not to the girl, and said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. As we read that story, we realize that Paul discerned what was troubling to her and was also troubling to them. Because what sounded like a good message was actually preventing people from coming to the knowledge of the truth. And Paul wanted it gone. Why and how is this gift so important to the church? Number one, it helps us discern the root of what is afflicting a person that is disturbed, of what spirit it is. As in Mark 5, when Jesus encountered a man with an unclean spirit who lived among the tombs, no one could control him and he broke free from every shackle that was placed on him. Night and day he cried out, cutting himself with stones. Anyone looking on would know that this was indeed a troubled man. And then I love these words, then Jesus came. The demon-possessed man ran to Jesus, begging him not to torment him. It was the demons in him crying out, leave us alone. And Jesus spoke again, not to the man, but to the spirit in him, and said, 
Come out of the man, unclean spirit. What is your name? And the demon answered and said, My name is Legion, for we are many. And Jesus dealt with all of them. Actually, they ran into a field of pigs that were nearby, and the pigs ran down the mountainside and drowned in the river. There's nothing our God cannot do. Amen. When those who knew the man came to see him, clothed and in his right mind, they were afraid. They thought, what has happened to you? And then they told them what Jesus had done for him. This gift will help you discern if there are wolves among the sheep in the body of Christ. Of course, this must be done with great wisdom and maturity, and only God can reveal that. In Acts 13, Paul and Barnabas were preaching, and Paulus came up to them and wanted to receive the word of God. But Elamus, the sorcerer, withstood them, seeking to turn him away from the faith. Seems like when God wants to do a special work, the enemy always shows up to do his work. Then Paul, who filled, was filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at the man and said, O oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness. You are ceasing to pervert the straight ways of the Lord. And now the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind, not seeing the sun for some days. And immediately a dark mist fell on him, and that released Paulus to believe in Jesus when he saw what God had done. You see how the two show up together, and God deals with the enemy and gets rid of him. And then he can do the work that he needed to do in the life of the one that was being ministered to. We are instructed in 1 John 4 to not believe every spirit, but to test the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This gift of discerning of spirits will help you discern and expose error. Lying spirits can spread false doctrine and we need to know and get rid of them. 1 Timothy 4.1 says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Number four, this gift will help you discern between a godly miracle and one that is not. 2 Timothy 2.9 says, The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. You see, the devil is a counterfeit. Counterfeit things can look like real ones. Have you ever seen something that was counterfeit? It's kind of hard to tell if it's real or not. My oldest son is a banker, and he says, I can always spot a counterfeit bill the moment I see it. And I said, how? He said, it's because I know every detail of the real one. I often think of that. When we know what we're dealing with, immediately the counterfeit exposes itself. But the enemy is very powerful and he's deceitful. It's one of his tricks. And so we have to discern to see which it is because the counterfeit will steal from the real thing. Number five, this gift will also help you discern when the Holy Spirit is living in someone. That's a wonderful thing. When Jesus met Nathanael in John chapter 1, he knew his heart and he said, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael said, How did you know me? He didn't know, of course, who he was talking to because Jesus knows us so well. As believers, we must always ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the true source of any issue and then be listening for his direction. The church, the body of Christ, is so precious to Jesus. He places pastors and watchmen on the wall to protect the flock of every congregation. He cares so much about what comes into his house and how we worship. And each of us can pray for this wonderful gift of discerning of spirits to be active in our lives to protect the true worshipers. Remember, the gifts are always given to benefit and bless the body of Christ. And my prayer for each of you is that you will pray and use the gift that God gives you 
to bless the congregation that you love. He looks for hearts that are open to hear from him and to receive his words. These gifts are not to be feared, but they're to be greatly desired. As we have spoken earlier, Paul said, pray earnestly that you will receive this gift. And God does give gifts to the church to bless everyone present. And so this morning, as you're listening in, perhaps you're saying, I wish I knew Jesus. I wish I knew him, the giver of these gifts. Well, the good news is you can know him. He desires more than you know to be your savior and live in your heart. It's he who brought you here this morning. No one is here by accident. You may have felt a little tug in your heart and thought, I need to go to church today. And if you did, I want you to know it was the Holy Spirit reminding you of that. I love it when he calls and speaks to us in that way because it shows us how much he loves us. And so you are here today by a divine appointment. And I want you to know that as we pray this morning, if you have never received Jesus as your Savior, you can do it as we pray. I so want you to know him. I want you to know the giver of gifts because he gives only good gifts and he gives them to those who are asking for them. And the first gift we need to ask for is salvation. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive my sin. I'm a sinner. I need you. And I thank you for what you did for me on that cross. You shed your blood. You gave your life so that I might have eternal life. That's the greatest gift of all. When we receive that, then we can go on and trust him for other gifts that he will be glad to give to us. So this morning as we pray, if you're listening and saying, I wish I knew him. I need him so much in my life. I need to know what to do. I need to know his plan for my life. I want you to know he will reveal that to you as you receive him first of all as Lord and Savior. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, I thank you for this precious congregation here and for those that are listening in their homes. I pray, Father, that you will meet each one today. And for those, Lord, who have never received you as Savior and Lord, that they will open their heart and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need you. Please forgive my sin. Please come into my heart and live there by your Holy Spirit so that I can live the rest of my life pleasing you, walking in your ways helping others to come to know you. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for hearing that prayer today. And I rejoice with those who are receiving you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, I want you to know he has become your Savior. He heard your prayer, and he has moved in, and he comes in to stay. Your past is gone. Whatever you've done that you wish you hadn't done, Whatever you've said that you wish you hadn't said, all of that is now under the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen? Amen? And the Bible says he remembers it no more. The enemy may remind you, and you may remind yourself, but God's forgotten. Once he covers it, it's gone. Oh, how blessed to know that he can provide for us in that way. We're going to sing it again. Steve's going to lead us in that wonderful song, but just sing, I'm surrounded by him. And that's how we fight our battles. Amen. 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 <coughs> Amen. Let's stand church again. Amen. And if those of you, anybody needs prayer, you go ahead and come up while we're singing. And somebody will come up and pray with you. Amen. And uh, let's just worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. And this is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Come on, sing it. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle.
joy to hear of answers to prayer week after week as you call them in and we take them before the Lord and then he does miracles. We have miracles sitting among us this morning because of answered prayer, don't we, Pete? Amen. We thank so much for what the Lord is doing in and among us and the way he has touched so many and we are so grateful for that. We look forward to hearing from you again this week and we're so thankful to be open on Sundays at 1030. We invite you to come. You will be blessed by the worship and the word that you receive, and you will be blessed by being with your brothers and sisters. Amen? Yes. There's nothing like the fellowship of brothers and sisters in Christ. I love it when we get together, and we're looking forward to some special times to, to share. Uh, this week, two special events. This Thursday is National Day of Prayer. Does our nation need prayer? Yes. Do our families need prayer? Yes. We all need prayer. Yes. And so we've been invited to come to the beautiful Legacy Center in Mission Valley Thursday night at 6 o'clock. A one-hour service, 6 to 7. We'll be there with other churches that have gathered, and we're going to pray in behalf of our cities, believing God to do the miracles that we need to have done, that he can only do. You will be blessed by seeing that beautiful center, and you will love that service as well. Then on Saturday, mothers, daughters, ladies, this is our time to celebrate together. We're going to have a beautiful luncheon out here in our beautiful yard. It's going to be covered with a beautiful canopy. Our men are going to serve us, and uh, we're going to have a wonderful luncheon there, a time of fellowship, and our speaker is going to be Ruth Parks, who leads our ladies. And you know, if you're receiving her Bible study, what a wonderful teacher she is, and the Lord has given her a special message for Saturday. So come, bring your daughter, your sister, your mother, your friend, granddaughter, whatever you have. Don't miss that meeting. It's going to be very special. There'll be door prizes, too, so you don't want to miss out on that. We also have other meetings that we want you to remember. Monday, prayer time. We gather with our family in our living room, and we urge you to do the same thing with yours. Make it a special time. I know you have other prayer times, but... That night, let us pray together, amen, and believe for God to do miracles in our homes. On Tuesday at 10 o'clock, Ruth meets with her ladies to give them a Bible study for the week, and they have uh, food available on that day. Then Wednesday night at 7 is our other live stream service, and David and Ruth and Seth and Gary lead us in worship. We're studying the book of Acts. It's a wonderful Bible study, and we're just asking the Lord to do the things in our church that he did in the book of Acts. Amen? We're believing for that. Then on Friday, we have food distribution. People line up all around the building here and wait in line for wonderful gifts that God gives us. We are amazed every week. They took me downstairs this morning and looked in the freezers and refrigerators, and all I could say was, thank you, Jesus. He's such a marvelous giver, and we are happy to give it out to you and to everyone you know that has that need. Then at 7 o'clock that night, our young people meet with Josh and Hector and Calla, our youth pastors, and they have a wonderful time of fellowship and in the Word. And so look forward to those. And then on Saturday at 10 o'clock, we offer food as well. Next Sunday, we hope to see you here. If you're here today, thank you for coming. If you're at home and wish you were here, come next Sunday at 1030. Yes, yes. It's going to be Mother's Day, and we're going to honor our mothers in a special way, and you'll not want to miss that. This week, would your prayer be, Lord, use me, however you see fit, to minister to someone else. Don't keep the wonderful gifts that God has given to you to yourself, but allow him to use you to bless it to someone else. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you and give you a wonderful week of victory.